former White House trade advisor, Peter Navarro, has um, just a little over one week of freedom left as he's officially been ordered to report to federal prison next week. Now, Navarro faces the prospect of becoming the first top Trump advisor to serve time in a jail for an offense related to the efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. In a court filing released just yesterday, a statement said that Dr. Navarro has now been ordered to report to the custody of the Bureau of Prisons, FCI Miami, on or before 2 p.m. Eastern Time on March 19th of 2024. Navarro's attorney said in a court filing referring to a low security prison in Florida. Now, Navarro was sentenced earlier to four months in prison after being convicted on two contempt of Congress counts. Now, he refused to comply with a subpoena from the House Select Committee that was investigating the January 6th Capitol riots. And he's been trying to avoid reporting to prison during his appeal. He is, in fact, appealing the case and the conviction that he has been found guilty of. But his efforts so far have failed. So, US District Judge Amit Mata ordered him last month to report to prison after he denied his bid to stay free or after the judge denied his bid to stay free as the appeal plays out in court. And so the DC Circuit Court of Appeals is considering a similar request from Navarro, but as of now, he will have to report to prison. Navarro is arguing that Meta's decision to not let him raise an executive privilege defense at trial was wrong. And that the possibility that the DC Circuit Court of Appeals might reverse that decision should keep him out of prison as the court weighs his case. Now, the reason why the judge wasn't hearing the executive privilege defense is because that wasn't a just defense in this case. So Navarro was trying to argue that, you know, well, Trump told me not to cooperate with Congress, and so I did as I was told. And that was the president. I must listen to the executive and do as I'm told. But that's. Not a defense in this case as the trial played out. So I've got more details, but Jake, any thoughts? A lot of mainstream media don't give you honest news. We do, you know why? Because of you. Paid membership on YouTube makes all the difference. Hit the join button below and you become the hero that sustains us. Look, what all the Trump guys are finding out is that all the nonsense they spew in media just doesn't work in court. So is there a complicated issue around executive privilege? Yes, there is. It's not clear cut and you'll see both sides always depending on who's the president saying, "Oh, we have complete uh you know power to deny you any conversation we had and access to that conversation, etc." And the other side will say, "Oh, you have no power." And they'll keep flip-flopping my whole life based on which party's in power, right? And it's super frustrating. But there are real guidelines, there are real rules. And in this case, Trump didn't even act it didn't even apply executive privilege. Exactly, yes. So, and certainly Biden didn't. So, it's a total fiction what Navarro is saying. So, when you go into court and you say, hey, the president used executive privilege with me, and then the judge says, okay, where? Show me where he. Show me the yeah, evidence. Show me the yeah. evidence for Trump saying that you have executive privilege over this, and he doesn't have it. Right. So, but then he, he's totally uh, like undeterred by that. Goes in front of the cameras right outside and goes, "Oh no, I had executive privilege." But do you? If you did, we just asked you for the evidence, right. and you're about to go to jail, son, right? Right. <laughs> and you didn't have the evidence because it doesn't exist. And but he still comes out there with this chitter chatter of, "Oh my God, I'm a victim and I'm a martyr and all this stuff." And part of the reason he does that because he knows with his base, that'll work like a charm. You just pretend to be a martyr and never present evidence. That's MAGA 101, so it'll work with them, but he's going to prison because it doesn't work in court. Now, Jake, I love that you mentioned the press conferences that he tried to carry out and what he was allegedly saying during those press conferences. I remember watching some of those videos on the show, and to be honest with you, the message was lost because there was a lot going on during those press conferences. And if you guys don't remember what I'm referring to, here's a little refresher. Several. These fine attorneys behind me say a few words, but. You got to talk? Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. 
This is um, this is what's wrong with America here. Who's this? Come on, bro. Yeah. You're already Come facing on. charges. Yeah, yeah, I get Go it. Go ahead and commit so, a crime. So, so um, here this whole time, situational. Alert. Yes. Okay. Hopefully, free speech. Don't like fascists. Will- CNC, you don't like fascists. CNC, you don't like fascists. So forgive me for losing any focus on whatever message he had during those press conferences. <laughs> yeah, well, all he ever did was in the press conferences was lie, so you didn't miss much. Right. Um, so look, I think it's a fine line on how you protest, and some people to this day are arguing you should go to people's house and try to make them afraid. Don't do that, okay? But when you have a person in power who's lying to people, and he's in a public space, and you're in a public space. There's nothing with it for wrong with that form of protest, especially because people in power never allow you to have access to them, right? So unless you're paying them a giant amount of money in campaign contributions, the regular person is never gonna get a chance to meet with Trump or Biden or any of their staffers. So if this is a form of protest you're doing, and by the way, on a much more serious note, when they're doing protests of Biden and his administration over Gaza, mm-hmm. and it's people on the left doing that, I'm also in favor of that. So there is a right time and place, and this is the right time and place. Right, yes. But you know, again, the same lesson that we can learn from the various Mar-a-Lago employees who carried out, you know, what Trump wanted them to do and moving around classified documents, and now they're facing charges themselves. You can say the same thing about Peter Navarro carrying out what Trump demand demanded of him, right? Trump usually is able to skirt consequences, although to be fair, he is for the first time facing some serious charges in multiple criminal cases. But you have all these other people who were associated with Trump having already been charged, already convicted, already sentenced to time behind bars. Again, you have those Mar-a-Lago employees when it comes to the classified documents. Here you have Peter Navarro who's gonna spend time behind bars because he listened to Trump and refused to respond to that congressional subpoena for the January 6th investigation. Maybe don't break the law. Maybe don't listen to what Trump wants you to do and instead do what you think is going to prevent criminal charges for you. <laughs> and these guys aren't smart enough to realize that, it's amazing. Yeah, but there is a distinction between the Oliveras and the Nadas who are just employees of Trump at Mar-a-Lago and the Peter Navarros. Because those guys just got caught up in Trump's criminality and they got stuck in a situation where they're loyal to Trump, their salary comes from Trump, etc. But they're, they're a civilian, they're a regular person and they're caught up in this mess. Mm-hmm. Whereas Navarro is one of the authors of this mess, he's one of the principal characters in this play. He's the one that wrote a book and bragged about how they were gonna try to steal the election. He didn't say steal in the book, but everything he outlined was the fake elector plot, Oops. which was an attempt to steal the election and do a coup against America. So he's a flagrant violator of our constitution, our laws, etc. He's one of the principal bad guys. So to see him go to jail for anything is is a relief. He should also be charged with insurrection. Don't do it like they did with Trump. Afterwards, oh, let's take him off the ballot, etc. No, do an actual trial where you try him for the thing that he did. This is just contempt of Congress. Right. Charge him on the substance of 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 the fake elector plot, the insurrection, and I wish that they would actually prove it in a court of law against some of these conspirators.